गुड इवनिंग माई माई डियर स्टूडेंट्स फॉलोअर्स कलीग्स लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन इन टूडेज वीडियो आई एम गोइंग टू एनालाइज द बिग पिश थ्यूरी विच वॉज प्रोफाउंडेड बाई पाल रोजन डायन रोडन द ओरिजिनेटर ऑफ दिस थ्यूरी वॉज पाल रोजन डायन रोडन एंड दिस थ्यूरी वॉज डिवेलप्ड Uh, in 1943 later on some other economist including murphy uh, shafer and uh, robert wishney uh, also contributed uh, to this theory in um, 1989 the theory of the proponents of the theory of big push argue that underdeveloped countries required large doses of investments to embark on the path of economic development from their present state of backwardness According to this theory, bit by bit investment program will not impact the process of growth as much as is required for the develop for the developing countries. In fact, injections of small quantities of investment will merely lead to wastage of uh, resources. Uh, therefore, Paul Rosendine has also quoted uh, from a study in uh, Massachusetts Institute of Technology that there is. a minimum level of resources that must be devoted to a development program if it is to have any chance of success uh, he gives an example of uh, just like launching a country into self sustaining growth is like getting an airplane off the ground there is critical ground speed which must be passed before the airplane can uh, take off uh Rosendine Roden also argued that uh, the entire industry which is intended to be created should be treated as uh, planned as a massive entity. He supports this argument by stating that the social marginal productivity of an investment is always different from its private marginal product. So, when a group of industries are planned together according to their social marginal product productivity, the rate of growth of the economy is greater than it would have otherwise been. Arodan also emphasized on the external economies to be realized through industrialization and is advocacy of big push in the form of high minimum amount of industrial investment in order to jump over economic obstacles to development a big push or critical minimum effort is believed necessary to break out of a low level of equilibrium trap about 10% of national income is to be invested for take off as industry as the leading sector Uh, this theory has also shed some light on the role of state for uh, big push the large scale program of industrialization educated by this model requires huge investments where which are beyond the means of the private sector uh, the role of the state in this theory is therefore critical for investments in the social or high capital which includes uh, uh, industries like power transport and communication even if the private sector had the requisite resources to invest in such program it would not do so since it is driven by profit motives similarly many investments are profitable in terms of social marginal net product but not in terms of private marginal net product so due to this there is no incentive for individual entrepreneurs to invest and take advantages of external economies uh rosendine rosen has uh, discussed three types of uh, indivisibilities and economies of scale and these include uh indivisibilities in the production function the infrastructure consists of means of transportation communication and energy resources they all contribute to development indirectly the second type of indivisible indivisibilities that were mentioned by paul rosendine rosen was uh indivisibilities of demand the complementarity with respect to demand requires the underdeveloped countries should establish such industries which could support each other to make investment in one project may be risky because in udcs the demand for goods and services is limited due to lower income uh, in other words the indivisibilities of demand require that at least a certain amount of investment be made in so many industries which could mutually support each other and here is an example uh, let us suppose uh, d1 is the uh, demand curve for uh, farm 
MR1 is the marginal revenue. So given the MC and the AC cars, the equilibrium point is at uh, E1 and uh, they will charge the price of uh, P1 uh, but producing this level of output uh, there is a uh, uh, economic class equal to P1 B A C. So if the government invest heavily in so many industries at the time then the demand curve will uh, shift to D4 and margin revenue will be uh, MR4. Now the equilibrium will be established by the equality between um, MC and uh, MR at point E. So OQ4 units of output will be produced and uh, they will charge price equal to uh, uh, OP4. And now uh, there will be excess profit equal to P1, P4, R and S. So it means that if there are that, that if huge investments are uh, uh, taking place in so many industries, then the loss of the individual firm can be converted into uh, abnormal profit for um, the industry as well or for so many firms. Uh, so that I just explained. And uh, the third type of indivisibilities are in indivisibility, in indivisibility in supply of savings. The supply of savings also serves as uh, indivisibility. A specific amount of investment can be made in the presence of specific savings. But in case of underdeveloped countries, because of lower in incomes, the savings remain low. So in the presence of these indivisibilities and non-existence of external economies, only a, book, only a big push can take the economy out of the uh, doldrums of poverty or the vicious circle of poverty. And it means a specific amount of investment is necessary to remove the obstacles in the way of economic development. Uh, this, uh, this theory has also some criticism and um, uh, some demerits. Uh, for example, uh, the critic says that uh, there are negligible economies in export and import substitute sector. The big push infrastructure may be justified on the ground of external economies, but according to Weiner, the export sector and the import substitute sectors are so backward in uh, underdeveloped countries that they hardly give rise to economies. A negligible economies from cost reducing investment. Uh, similarly, neg uh, neglecting investment in agriculture sector. In this theory, emphasis has been laid upon making investment in infrastructure and industries while it neglects the investment to be made in agriculture sector and its allied sectors. As the agriculture sector is the lar largest sector in the uh, less developed countries and it will be a mistake to ignore it. Uh, another criticism leveled against the big push theory is uh, inflationary pressure. Uh, from where the funds will come in underdeveloped countries to spend them on social overhead capital. If the funds are raised through foreign loans or by printing new notes, uh, this will lead to uh, hyperinflation in the uh, less developed economy or less developed country. Uh, then there are uh, some other criticism like uh, administrative and uh, institutional difficulties in the underdeveloped countries. And uh, there is another criticism that it is not a historical fact. The big push theory is not uh, the big push theory is a recipe for the underdeveloped countries, but it has not been derived on the basis of historical ex experience. Uh, as Professor Hagen says, the big push theory lacks the historical evidences and facts. Uh, it's not back, uh, supported by historical uh, experience or uh, uh, historical uh, support. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for uh, watching this video. I, I hope this was inter informative. If you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, kindly subscribe the channel and don't forget to click on the bell icon so that you can get timely not notifications about my new videos that I'll upload for you. Uh, thanks for watching this video and kindly subscribe this channel and uh, share various videos of this channel in various WhatsApp groups. You may also share uh, these videos with your friends, with your colleagues, with your students, so that they can also uh, get benefit by watching these uh, videos. Thank you and uh, see you in another video.